Hello and welcome to the new Simply Wall Street valuation section. We've had this live on the platform for a few months now, and we wanted to do a walkthrough on how to use this section of the company report. For a quick overview, it's worth pointing out that of the six checks we do here, three of them revolve around relative valuation techniques, and three of them revolve around intrinsic valuation techniques. Relative valuation is where we compare the company in question to other companies, and that's checks one through to three. These checks are called the peers check, the industry check, and the fair ratio check. Whereas intrinsic valuation techniques revolve around assessing the company on an absolute basis by itself. These checks are the fair value check and analyst price targets check. On a high level, when I'm using this section, obviously I'd like to see that a company passes all six of the checks, meaning that it's potentially undervalued. But to get true insights, I need to check each section and see what I can learn from each of them. And finally, it's worth mentioning that the analysis done in this section is not a buy or sell recommendation. So let's dive in. In section 1.1, there's no analysis done here. It's just simply explaining to me which key valuation metric it's going to use for checks one through to three, based on which metric is most appropriate for this stock. You can see the logic behind how it chooses a particular metric within the learn section, and also a video that dives into it a bit. But for now, all I need to know is that this company is profitable, so the most appropriate ratio is the PE ratio. So here's the first analysis, check 1.2, assessing the price to earnings ratio against peers. Now what I want to look for here is one, is this company a good combination of low price and high growth, meaning a low PE combined with high earnings growth rate? And two, are there any better opportunities that I should potentially investigate? Better meaning a better combination of price and growth prospects. From a first glance, I'm looking for how Microsoft compares to peers based on a combination of PE ratio and earnings growth forecast. In this case, it looks like all of these companies are pretty similar give or take a bit. So Alphabet and Meta seem more appealing than Microsoft in the sense that they have a similar growth rate expectations to Microsoft, 13% for Alphabet and 17% for Meta, yet they're trading at lower multiples of 26 and 31 times earnings respectively, whereas Microsoft is at 35 times earnings. So with that in mind, I'm going to make a mental note to myself to investigate Meta and Alphabet later on to see if they're good opportunities because at a surface level here, they do seem pretty appealing, at least on a relative basis. Now, I can also change the peers here if I don't agree with what I see. Let's say, for example, I want to swap in IBM for Meta, since I think it's more relevant. I can simply click here, edit peers, and here I can add any company I like. And now that I'll be saved to my saved peers whenever I come back. Now, I still have roughly the same insights, except I can see here that Microsoft is now trading below the peer average because IBM has a much higher PE multiple. It also has a much higher earnings growth rate estimate, so that might explain why investors are willing to pay up for the stock. So Microsoft might now be a good combination of price and growth since I've included IBM in the mix and not Meta. But let's have a look at the other checks. Next, I'll take a look at 1.4 here which uses the same ratio as before, but this time it's compared to a much bigger sample size, which is the industry that it's in. I'll be looking for the exact same thing as the previous check to see how Microsoft sits within its industry, which is the US software industry, and to basically assess if there's any potentially better opportunities out there that are a combination of low price and high growth. It's reassuring to see that it's trading below the industry average of 42 times earnings. So I'd hover over each of these columns to look at the companies within each bracket of PE multiple to see what's in there and if anything takes my eye in terms of that combination. I won't go into that now, but that's essentially what I'm looking for. Next, I'll take a look at 1.5, which is again the PE ratio, but this time it's compared to the fair ratio. Now, the fair ratio is determined by a statistical model that's been created by Simply Wall Street. That model determines how the market is valuing companies with similar traits like forecasted earnings growth rates, profit margins, and other risk factors. Therefore, this ratio tells me what this company could technically trade at if the market valued it like it values companies with similar traits. Here, I can see that it's currently trading at around 35 times earnings, but the fair ratio, seeing how companies with similar traits are valued, thinks that Microsoft could be trading at a higher multiple of 53 times earnings. Now, I might need to consider some factors that the model may not be taking into account. For example, I know Microsoft is a huge company valued at around $2.4 trillion. 
So I think that that size may be a reason why investors aren't paying as much for it, despite the fact that it may have similar earnings growth rates, profit margins, and risk factors to other companies that are trading at higher earnings multiples. Alternatively, there could be some competitive advantages or even disadvantages that a company has that may explain why it trades above or below what the fair ratio is indicating. These may be qualitative factors that are not yet represented in the company's financial statements. With that in mind, I think Microsoft definitely has some competitive advantages that investors like, but its huge size and maybe even some macroeconomic factors right now might not be enough for investors to be willing to pay up for it. Next, I'd have a look at check 1.6, which is the share price versus fair value. Now, this is the first intrinsic valuation analysis check, and there's actually two checks done on this one piece. It should be clear again that these are never buy or sell recommendations. Here, I'm simply looking for three things. First, does the company look undervalued based on Simply Wall Street's valuation model? Secondly, what are the inputs and assumptions in Simply Wall Street's model? And thirdly, do I agree or disagree with the inputs? Looking at this, it seems like Microsoft might be slightly overvalued compared to its current stock price, so it doesn't pass checks four and five for valuation. So that's my first takeaway. However, until I know how that was calculated, that doesn't mean too much to me. So next, I'm gonna click on the data button and I'll have a look at the inputs that have gone into this DCF model. If this is the first time I'm looking at this business, I won't actually have too much context or even conviction on what I think are reasonable numbers here. But until then, I can still use my judgment to at least scan over the three main things in a discounted cash flow model. And those three main numbers are one, the discount rate, two, free cash flow estimates from analysts, and three, the perpetual growth rate. Once I've got to know the business and its future prospects way more than I currently know now, I'll come back here and see if I think these numbers are reasonable or if I think they should be higher or lower. I'll eventually run my own numbers and I can even use the beta stock valuator tool to play around with this and see how the valuation is impacted as I adjust these different inputs. Now, the last check is section 1.7, the analyst price targets check. Here, I'm looking for two things. Firstly, do the analysts covering this stock agree that there is any decent upside from today's price? And two, how have they performed over recent history in terms of accuracy? Having a look here, I can see how Microsoft's share price has been trending and how the one-year price targets from analysts changed as things developed. Firstly, when I hover my cursor over the latest share price, I can see that the consensus from analysts is that there's very little estimated upside from today's share price. Additionally, they largely agree with each other since the majority of analysts have price targets around the average. There are some outliers, of course, where some analysts think Microsoft could be worth $450 in a year's time, and others think it will be worth $232 in a year's time. But I won't have a strong opinion of what I think is most likely until I get to know the underlying business a bit better. In terms of their accuracy over the past, I can see that back in March of 2021, they ended up being pretty spot on with their price target estimates. But then as the share price continued increasing in the later half of 2021, so too did their one year price targets. Then of course, in 2022, macroeconomic events occurred that brought markets downwards. So the analysts ended up being pretty far off from reality. In early 2023, the stock has climbed pretty quickly and is about 10% shy of their average price targets from a year ago. So while analysts were mostly wrong over where they felt the stock would end up over late 2022 and early 2023, they were pretty close in early 2022 and where they are now in mid 2023. So that brings me to the end of the valuation section. I've learned now that Microsoft is potentially undervalued in some areas and potentially overvalued in others. My next steps are going to be one, looking into Meta and Alphabet due to that peer comparison chart to see if they're a compelling opportunity. Two, diving into the underlying business of Microsoft and the industry it's in to build up my understanding of it so that I can feel more confident about making future forecasts. And thirdly, I'll come back to the DCF section and once I'm confident to make my own estimates of the future, I'm going to create my own DCF where I'll tweak the numbers used and get my own valuation of the stock. I'll play around with the stock valuator tool as well and just see how the valuation changes as I adjust the inputs. This way, I'm coming to my own conclusion about whether or not I think the company is overvalued and I have conviction in my decision because I'm the one who did the research. Anyway, that's all for this video on how to use our new valuation section. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions, please do let us know either by reaching out to us via our help center or on commenting on the video below.
Before I go, remember, think in decades, not months. Reach your own conclusions and be a lifelong learner. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.